So this uh, Tuesday, uh, the acting chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, Mr. Akatevadide Amota, shocked uh, his colleagues in the rights and advocacy sector by declaring that internet shutdown during the COVID during the 21 presidential elections was justified and had no effect. This, as the country voted in the dark. To speak to us about this and more, we have Charita Himbisa with Executive Director of the Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy. Charity, welcome to Morning at NTV. Thank you very much. And how are you holding up? It's, it's, it's a difficult time, I must say, but um, difficult times are for us all. Okay. I, I guess you're facing what I am facing. You mustn't be sitting in a, oh, of course. In a, a of, of <laughs> It's a tough time. <laughs> oh, God. Last week, you you were arrested. Yes. Why were you arrested, Charity? I, and I tell you, Andrew, that, that has been one of my fun times of telling people that I entered the hotel. Mm. The hotel owner called the police mm. and told them somebody has trespassed. Now, a hotel is a public, a public place. So yeah. they said I had criminally trespassed their hotel. So, wow. And then suddenly I was surrounded by eight policemen mm. and I was taken to Wandegaya Police Station. I have the beautiful... Only woman. you alone. Uh, me and the journalist I was with, she's called Betty Kalunji from, oh dear. from uh, Delta TV. Oh dear. So we're taken and then they said to her, produce that video. What were you talking about? They put it inside their computer. They started pressing uh, what exactly is there, what was she saying. Trespassers had time to record. Now trespassers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm grateful that you're fine and you're out and safe. Yes. Um, on your behalf, we asked the questions that mattered at the Tally Center. Thank you very much. And the police gave us the, the, the they I, said whatever they said, we ran it on news. But and thank you very much to mm. all my friends who came, oh, yeah. the journalists yeah. who were fighting, mm. the ones who made that. I'm, I'm really, really. Do you feel that the civic space has been taken up by um, what is entirely happening in the different spaces? Mm. In one way or the other, do you feel that um, maybe um, the powers that be have not done what should be done? to amplify the civic space that we need to see that Ugandans can have a free and fair, you know, alignment of their opinions and they can share what they what they feel without fear or favor or without uh, being um, curtailed by the state or with whatever. Yeah, I, I know that the space has kept narrowing mm. and that as it narrows, um, there's a lot of suspicion on both sides, mm. on the side of the state, but also on the side of the citizens within themselves. What the state did was actually to infiltrate civil society organizations oh. and then make them fight one against the other. Okay. So, and then now they, uh, th there's also the whole tide of individuals, oh, yeah. one fighting another. Mm. Now, every time there is a crack, even in a home, mm. know that it is headed for, Disintegration. Oh, yeah. Yes, disaster. The most important thing is that even when there is a tide, mm. it is important to stick together and navigate it oh, yes. as a team. Because when you stick together, mm. uh, for some reason you can push back. Oh yeah. You can push back yeah. a bit. Yeah. Not always so much, but mm. there is a bit there of, is a support structure. There then. is a support yeah. structure. So I think that as citizens and as civil society organizations, we need to remember mm. that as the space narrows on all fronts, even mm. for media, oh, yes. that when the, the, the space is narrowing for the media, civil society comes out and must actually make a severe statement mm. on what is happening as that space is narrowing. Mm. But every time it narrows and we keep quiet, we don't help ourselves. I we know. only keep making it smaller and smaller. And the smaller it becomes, eventually we will be invisible. And There will be no space. There will be no space. The report, the statement uh, made by Amoti yesterday, that the shutdown of the internet, it was, it was something we needed as a nation. Um, I saw a couple of my people online on Twitter saying that we needed a space to detoxify from social media and the likes. What do you make of this statement uh, made by, um, by Uganda Human Rights, uh, you know, acting chair, as an election observer, from your perspective as an election observer, what does this mean to you? Now, uh, Uganda Human Rights. Yes. Human Rights. Rights. Uh, you, you advocate for the rights yes. of Ugandans. Yes. But you do not know what the rights of Ugandans are as enshrined mm. in the constitution, mm -hmm. in regional, and international instruments, mm. then there is a problem. You need quick sensitization.
Mm. Or you need to be sacked and they put a new person who <laughs> understands the human rights. Right. Somebody like uh, maybe uh, uh, I, I was suggesting today that maybe Dr. Uh, Sewanyana should take over. Mm. Because you see, we are signatories to the international civil and political rights. True. Now, what does the ICCPR provide for in terms of access to information? Mm, freedom and, of expression. And internet freedom yes. and freedom of expression. Mm. Okay, if you don't want to quote the international instrument, can mm. we go to the regional level? Mm. We are signatories. We have not ratified yes. the African Charter mm. of Democracy and good governance. True. What does it provide for in terms of principles of information, access to information, and the internet? Mm. Fine. You don't want to refer to regional instruments. We come back come home. Come back home mm. and look at your access to information act. What does it say? Barren. That whole act was buried on the day of the shutdown. I know. Article 29, mm. which sits in that constitution, mm. also gives you the mandate, the right to mm. express your opinion, mm. to access information, mm. and to have it to make a decision. Why do we shout about voter education? We shout about voter education because we want the voter to have information. Information is power. You cannot say, I have taken your information, and for that reason, mm. I am happy that I took away your right to have information. And that is when I said, Andrew, mm. that the more we keep quiet about these things, mm. the more our space narrows and the when more we, we become extinct what do we mm. need to do as mm. ugandans mm. there is also the rights of a consumer to, as to yes to demand who mm. consume mtn mm. airtel africell as the consumer and, uh, the irony, we can sue those companies the irony is that after the internet was back we didn't have our data on yes it was it was actually gone but um just to bring it into context the president alluded to that this was entirely because Uganda is under attack by the West, by the way, and it's our job to protect. And again, Biabakama came out and said that uh, they didn't want anyone to infiltrate their system as, as per the, um, the, the portal they were using to get the results and, and, and the likes. In the wake of security, yes, I understand we are civil rights activists and all. In the wake of um, attacks from the West, especially digitally, cyber, do you think it's still just viable to shut down the internet regardless? You see, I, I, and I, I, I will tell you, Andrew, that I made the point mm. on the day I was on NBS. Mm. I said it was okay to shut down the internet if it was a security threat. Mm. But I also said that we had gone back to 1900. I was on NBS mm. when I said it feels good to live in 1900 mm. and experience what these people went through. Mm. But in hindsight... I know one thing, for mm -hmm. a fact. We had become an angry people. As a nation. As we were heading to the election. Mm. And that anger was only going to keep spiraling and reach a certain level. Before, which, before we reach that certain level, what triggered the anger of the populace? The, the, the situations that had happened during the pre-election period, uh, especially the campaign period. Mm. You know you are in this country. Oh, yes. You saw what happened during the pre-election mm. period, especially campaigns. Mm. Now, that had reached a, a, a uncontrollable levels. Mm. And so if you are going to argue for the sake of security, which I can buy in as a Ugandan, mm. I don't know about the young people whom I met on that day and even the ones whom I said to that it is good to be 1900 and they blasted me. They said, how do you call yourself an executive director of a citizen's coalition mm. and you defend a shutdown? And I said, ah, if it means that we are going to hack ourselves because of the internet, yes. then it is as well the internet goes off. So I said there were two sides to the internet. Oh, yes. And I think that the chairperson should have come like that. Mm. He should have started from a rights angle because human rights. Right. True. Then from the rights angle, however, say mm. that when you are enjoying your rights, mm. you have responsibility. Oh, yes. Because even the instruments that I just quoted right now talk about responsibility. That's why people like Facebook, when you have hate speech, that is responsibility. They take you they down. They take you down. Mm. When it's Twitter, mm. same thing. Yeah. They have the standards that have been set and those are responsibility. Oh, yes. So if you argue it from the point of responsibility, you're in context. It makes sense. So when you say there was a security threat, yes. what government needed to do was to come out and explain to the citizenry before even shutting them down. Unquote. The EC chairperson said that the, the, the system they use for voting tallying at the National Tallying Center, where I was, he said that 
It was designed two years before elections. Does this, in one way, from your perspective, insinuate that the shutdown was pre Pre-assumed before we even go to the elections. Yeah, we can think about that because if you remember, there is a minister who promised us uh, two years to the election that mm. we shall actually shut you down. Oh, yeah? He did. He so promised. this was a plan? Move. Yes, it was. And uh, even us, the Ugandans, we had suspected it because of the social media shutdown of 2016. Mm. So what you, we you didn't, downloaded VPN? Uh, all those things. <laughs> <laughs> what we didn't know yes. was that it was going to be an internet. Total shutdown. Yes. So, but government had intimated. For me, mm. what I think is wrong mm. and what I think that the government should be hearing out is they should have come out to explain because you, Andrew Chamagero, mm. mm. as a citizen of Uganda, yeah. have certain things you are entitled to. And, and that is my of, space. And that is your space. One of them is that right to information and the access to information. Mm. So if I am going to deny you that one right, mm. let me give you an explanation. As to why. As to why I am doing this. Mm. Buying or don't buy in. But I have given you that explanation. Okay. Um, uh, Charity, how did the shutdown affect you as an election observer uh, from your context? Uh, what did it mean to you? How did it affect not only you, but even other Ugandans who happened to share your sentiments on the same? Now, uh, you know that on election day we had 1,136 observers mm. and we asked them to observe two polling stations wherever they were. Mm. To receive that information from the observers, it was coming through SMS. Yelly. Now you have how many texts that I have talked about? Mm. 2,190 because them, they were looking at two polling stations. So they have to give you text from those mm. 2,000. To receive the text, you had to type. Mm. You go back on the computer to type. What are you receiving from the text? What are they Felt saying? like 99. Exactly, <laughs> 1900. <laughs> and then there was the question of the phone calls. Oh, yes. So you would have to call back to verify the things that you had to verify. Now, even if you needed to get extra information that was coming from some place, mm. it was difficult to verify it very fast. Mm. The internet gives you a chance, if you're looking for information to back up what you're saying. Like you need the voters' role, you need how many voters are on this place, mm. you need to know to All back that up that faster. information mm. was on the internet. And many times you find yourself clicking, thinking oh, I'm going to the internet. And then hey, you remember, yes. I am no shut connection. Yes, yeah, so it, it, it really was an impediment. Mm. It took us longer than we do to even produce the first preliminary mm. impressions mm. of the election and to put together thoughts on the data because you see when we go into election observation it's mm. not entirely just because you want to only report bad things about government mm. or whatever but you also want to improve the process ultimately for the voter yes over like time. i will give you the example of yesterday mm. when i was telling one the the one who works with us in elections mm. i was telling him that many places they don't have these buckets mm. the white ones they, they have improvised basins. Nice. And basins which are not transparent, mm -hmm. which is already illegal. Mm. In terms of the process, they're supposed to have the bucket to secure that ballot. Oh, but yes. they were just putting it in a basin and just leaving it there. Supposing wind came and blew away all these ballots. Mm. Then what happened? I know. It becomes risky. Uh, and if half of them got spoiled, how about me who woke up to go and vote? How have, you, your vote? Ha, have you uh, mm. thought about me mm. and what it meant for me to go and vote? Mm. So when we told them, they actually came and intervened and nice. put their the buckets in those places where those buckets were nice. not, especially within Kampala Center. So that is it. When there is a problem, you call Electoral Commission, tell them there is a problem here. If you find a ghost post, you tell them there is this year and there they come an, and rectify. There is an illusion from government that CSOs and um, NGOs from where you come from, um, they are out there to always... Uh, criticize government programs and efforts at the different layers. And in one way or the other, this does not take the country to the right direction. What's your comment on that? Now, Andrew, mm. that has been a charge leveled against us for a very long time. Yes. And I said it the other day on uh, On another media, yes. I said that, you know, I think at this point as civil society, we need to also stop mm. and ask ourselves, we have been on the other side of where we only criticized and shouted and mm. government has ignored us to the extent they now don't even want to pay attention to what we are saying. They are freezing your accounts. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, maybe we need to think differently. 
rules of engagement change? Mm. Yes, uh, that um, maybe we need to go more on the lobby end mm -hmm. and we need to employ the half full, half yes, empty, half empty principle. Mm. That we will appreciate them for the mm. good things they have done mm. and then find tact of pointing at the ones that need improvement mm -hmm. and look more like we are a support system than a critical system to a, the a, <laughs> than a machinery oh, yes. that is hired to put down that's that. how it looks like from government's perspective yes, because government is always like CSOs and NGOs are sponsored by the West to bring down whatever we're trying to do and I think that is something uh, that is not True, according to what you're saying. Yeah. Well, Isaac um, Chibedi uh, says on Twitter that I thank you so much, um, Charity. But just to bring it to context, the day they shut down the internet, I felt I shouldn't equally vote because usually the digital platforms show you and they give you the, the chance of what is happening on ground and you possibly go out. So that's how it affected me. Someone says, I lost a 7 million where I had to confirm via mail that that is my account and I didn't confirm in time and I lost the money. That's how bad it was. But no, government also lost billions. Of course. And uh, the president will go back and say that we are not dealing with normal. Say here we're dealing with a critical... It is, it's war. That's how it says. Police says that some of the NGOs were telling results and inspired of not wanting to do so. Some of those were arrested at our Hotel Africana. Did you hear of that incident? And were you a part of that incident? Now, I wasn't part of that incident. I wasn't at Hotel Africana, but mm. my colleagues were at Hotel Africana. What happened? Now, the, the, the truth of the matter is, okay, the law mm. gives the, the, the mandate mm. to collect and announce results to the electoral commission. To collect and announce results. Okay. Now, if at any one time you mm. find yourself in the track of collecting results mm. and then announcing them, Mm -hmm. then you are in direct confrontation with the electoral commission and at any one time they can run you down okay because the mandate is theirs indeed now when my colleagues said they have a tally center mm. what i don't know is if security thought they are actually tallying results oh I get it. Because they might have not been tallying results. They might have been tallying the processes mm. across the country. Mm. They might have been looking at broad issues that we are affecting the process and not necessarily tallying the results. So, mm -hmm. But I think security decided to, to not give chance to this issue of so they, the word tally. They didn't listen. Tally only means you're tallying results. results. And, and so you're going to confuse us as a nation. If we have decided to go through a cost of switching off the internet, mm. we've decided to go through all these costs. We are all at Chambogo. Why are you oh, telling exactly from Africa? Exactly. Why are you telling? <laughs> For you, why are you telling? So yes. that is where the, I, I think the, the, the mismatch in communication How happened. do we bridge that? Because elections <laughs> are still coming. Up. I think that the bridge needed to come from the fact that now the police should have asked the electoral commission which they did mm -hmm. and the lawyer of the electoral commission went and made a statement mm. and these people actually had accreditation they even presented the accreditation mm. now when you have accreditation the electoral commission should then ask you what exactly are you going to do are you doing mm. because still they have the mandate over you they're asking what is it that you want to do with that then you explain to them if it is credible explanation mm. they actually tell the police no, mm. I, I think we've got it wrong. And yes, they came out after lawyers negotiating, going back and forth with mm. CID, different spaces, begging. But I think our legal team has done a commendable job. The mm. LASPNET, the Uganda Law Society, oh, yeah. uh, NEPTIL, these guys have done a commendable job. And if there is a way of supporting them to become even stronger to mm. defend the rights of human rights defenders, it would be You'll actually go to that. Um, uh, just a little bit back... Uh, to why you were arrested. Yes. You were arrested. W was it because about a report you're about to launch? No, uh, I, I have told you what happened exactly, Andrew. Mm. I was at a hotel with a young girl called Betty mm. Mm. Betty was asking me basically about Nakawa election. Mm. And I mentioned the election of where there was uh, 
the interchange of party symbols yeah. in a place in Chivali. Mm. And I told her that, look, even in Chivali, there was an incident of where the NRM bus symbol mm. was interchanged mm. with the independent chair mm. symbol. NRA. So, uh, 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 no, chair. chair. Yes, there yes. was a chair, a mm, symbol yes. of a chair. Mm. So I said the bus and the chair. The mm. bus and the chair. Yes. While I said the interchange. Mm. Now, the policeman at the police post said that when the man said I had criminally trespassed, he had also heard that I was talking about the bus, but in a political season. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in, a, in a political season, how do you stop somebody from talking about the bus, Andrew? How? How do you stop somebody from talking about a chair? How do you I, I, even I you. stop somebody from talking about a hoe mm. or a key? Or a dove. Or a dove for that mm. matter. A, a symbol? Mm. And so, the truth of the matter is, I was arrested for nothing. So they didn't charge you? They... No, they didn't. After looking through all the things that they were trying to craft and compoke them, they realized, hey, but now, mm. what? Because my lawyer came in, I insisted that my lawyers had to come, and then they, they, they asked, okay, what is the charge? Mm -hmm. Said, so, do you know the, the owner of the hotel said criminal trespass? Then mm. he started laughing, ha, 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 ha. Mm. In a public hotel? I know. It is criminal? It's weird. Let's talk about free and fair elections. From your perspective as uh, an observer, um, was this election free and fair? And um, we are yet to, to hear a statement from Sedu about the elections. <laughs> Usually after elections, uh, Sedu comes up with a statement and another CSO comes up with a statement. Charity, you've not come up with a statement. <laughs> Were these elections free and fair? From your lenses as an observer. <laughs> It's an opinion uh, we want uh, to hear Andrew, from you as an observer. You have not had a, mm. a report from Sedu. Yes. Uh, let the dust, a statement, okay. Let, let the dust settle. Sedu will, will, will eventually <laughs> produce... <laughs> We'll eventually produce a report, but as it is mm. now, mm. and because the public wants to hear what they hear, mm. it is that Andrew, an election is not just the election. It's a process. And that the 2001 court ruling mm -hmm. did set the benchmarks for mm. a free, fair, fair election. and credible election. Mm. One of the key benchmarks was equal access to media mm. by presidential candidates. One of the other key benchmarks mm. was the question of campaign period being three months, oh, yeah. but we had 64 days this mm. time. There's a justification for COVID there, but was that sufficient time? Mm. The other thing there is the question of the media mm. being given space to amplify the messages of the candidates as much as possible. What did we see mm. in that period? Mm. Even leading up to the election, including accreditation oh, of yes. media and civil society organizations, mm. which the court has now come out to pronounce. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Much after. We won the, after the election. Uh, much Can after you imagine? the election. But there is a precedent mm. that has been set. Let's not lose hindsight on it. Oh, that yes. if the case has been won, Mm. It means there is a bigger case mm -hmm. in terms of the election. It is tying in with mm. what the benchmarks of 2001 are. So mm. you cannot therefore say everything was mm. okay based on election day mm. processes. And because on election day processes we saw just a few things. Mm. On election day itself also, there was a delay in delivery of results from the polling station mm. to the t district tally centers. Mm. Now, in 2016, the court ruling had said that time should be shortened such that people's minds are yeah, not relaxed, yeah. put in a state of anxiety. Mm. That didn't happen. And then there was a delay in the start of polls. Mm. And then there was the BBVK machines not functioning credibly. Oh, yes. But that one had its own issues of people not being very well trained and mm. whatever. So I I if you amalgamate the whole All those issues, yeah. Uh, picture mm. then the election and then the internet shut down <laughs> i know <laughs> because it was an issue also in 2016 election it keeps coming when back. you look at the holistic picture then mm. the election fell short 
of mm. internationally accepted standards, mm. but it also fell short of and the benchmarks mm, the that country. our Supreme Court uh, judges mm. had put on table for us in 2001. Mm. And so I, when SEDU gets round mm. to putting together this report someday, in future. We need it. Future <laughs> I cannot give purposes, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see mm. that this is how the report is going to be crafted. It's going to talk about the issues as mm. they happen. Violence is a key precursor. It shows you that the yeah. situation is not, uh, the ground is not leveled mm. and that it's not a democratic. We process. didn't have violence, by the way, according to the police report, say that we only registered 48 cases um, of, um, you know, violence. And these were isolated incidents, according to police, as compared to the previous elections where we had over 10 of thousands of, of violent cases during elections. That was on election day. Yes. E day. But yes. from the nomination about day, pre election, mm. did we have violence? Oh, yeah, and to I what hear extent? Mm. So, when we look at the process, when we do this election report, mm. for us, we start from the day the roadmap was launched. Wow, that's quite a long one. We'll be waiting for that now. Coming as uh, so we're wrapping up this, yesterday there were elections. Did you go vote? Yeah, we went. The, ta and, the turn-up uh, was low. Yeah, it was. Um, many people have alluded these to a voter fatigue. What do you make of this? It is true. One of the reforms that we asked uh, government to take through mm. when we came from 2016 was that we would have more boxes added onto the poll booth okay. on Why? election day, such that one voter uh, it goes through the whole process to poll once, once mm. and finish. Mm. Because we had seen that it had become a trend right from 2001. Mm. Whenever we finish the presidential election, the we local, go back to normal. The, the local mm. council elections hardly get any. They're, they're the most critical and ones. They are very critical. Mm. No matter how much you drum, you tell them, guys, go. Because we still went back to try and mobilize them yeah. to go and vote. But it, it was not flying. Mm. One, most of them were saying, we have lost money during the internet shutdown. We're trying to recover, mm. like you've had somebody oh, saying. Yeah. Others were saying, so what does it help? Even when you vote, it doesn't reflect what you have decided to vote. Mm. Others were saying, we just don't want the, your things of elections. We're mm. tired of elections. So there was so many mixed sentiments. Mm. Now, to manage that sentiment, mm. you would have had, even Kenya does this. Oh, yeah. And many other jurisdictions do this. You mm. put more bo boxes, mm. have your mayor there, have your councillors here. Mm -hmm. But um, in the Ugandan situation, what the argument was from parliament was that people, even when you just give them three boxes, we have high numbers of invalid votes. Now, if you give them five boxes, ah. it might even be worse. Wasa. People will be tired. People will not even remember who to to, to vote, vote for because now the candidates are too many you have the presidential candidates so they said you know we have to start from a point of civic education we make them empowered mm. civically to understand so many issues and remember and have high retention levels of who is coming what are their oh, mandates yeah. then after that we can increase the boxes well that is uh Charity Ahim Siwe from uh, Sedu, and he's she is the executive director i'm sure you saw some um ballot uh, papers where people, if they didn't find a particular <laughs> symbol, they do this. That's a story for another day. We'll take a break for now. Morning at NTV still underway. We'll come back shortly. Don't go away. We're coming back.